I was born on the 26th of February, 1934, at Bartika Eshikubo, British Guyana. I just think that maybe because when I opened my eyes at 5 a.m. on the day I was born, I saw the Western Hemisphere, you know, the rivers, the sky above. That has lodged in my uh, physical self a need to be out there, to be free and expressive. I saved up the money to pay my passage to England with the support and encouragement of my mother. But the moment I arrived in London, I knew I was home. Can you remember actually the, uh, the, 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 the boat come up the Thames? No, 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 or it arrived you, in, in, in uh, Portsmouth. You, port, so you yes. came to London by train? By train. Oh, yeah, I was on the train. Uh, you know, I was on the train and my, and my uncle met me at Waterloo. Meanwhile, I wasn't even listening to what he was saying. I was looking around. You must have been completely amazed. Absolutely that. amazed. My meeting with Cowboy prompted me to think that I could get into Rock College without any exam or anything that I would, you know, because I was this charming young man who was very desperate to become an artist that he would take me in. Mm. Because I'd heard how warm and, yeah. uh, you know, encouraging he is, but he wasn't having any of that from me. I had to sit the exam. So I sent in my stuff and I got past the first hurdle. And then I didn't hear for ages. Well, of course, the Christmas came, right? And um, so uh, I wasn't accepted it was a dry letter. So I rang up and couldn't get car weight. So I wrote a long letter. Um, half pleading, as he said later, half accusing and very angry. <laughs> so he wrote back to me and said, explained why uh, I hadn't got in. I hadn't enough work to convince the, the committee or board, whatever you call it, Anyway, I am uh, uh, um, sorely disappointed by this rejection. And he said in his letter to come to London and, uh, and then come back, we'll take another look at you. So I went back um, and they took me. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. How when I came back, I did my first show uh, at the Grabowski, which was to do with uh, the themes that I'd already been exploring, you know, like birth and the beggars. And yeah. My paintings were really to do with uh, um, some real life experiences, like seeing somebody, uh, the, you know, the beggars. I'm, I remember from my childhood very clearly, right? Papa was a roll of snow Wherever he laid his hat was his home And when he died All he left us was alone oh. Papa was a roll of snow My son, yeah Wherever he laid his hat was his home And when he died All he left us was alone now you're living in New York. You've got at least for a year. You've got a, 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 an income. A, a income, and you're making paintings. No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working very hard, long, long hours, and. Uh, but what kind of paintings are you making? I was making. Well, um, when I left here, what I did was I, um, with the help of the um, textile department in Camberwell, we. Um, it made a big screen blow blow up this Bowling's Variety Store. <coughs> this is uh, a photograph of Bowling's uh, Variety uh, Store, which right. is uh, your mother's that's right, emporium. My, that's right. I screened this image on several areas of canvas. Let's say uh, um, I made about eight or nine screened images with nothing else but this mother's house on it. Mm. 
and took it to New York. And it was in New York that I started using uh, areas of color purely and simply, right? and, uh, uh, um, allowing them to, to, to float and bleed and stuff uh, um, below this house image. Yeah. And that's how uh, um, a lot of the paintings that I was making at the time came about. Yeah. And, and it's about 80, 81, 82. Mm. But, but this begins the period when you Atlantic hop. You mm. know, you'd spend some time in New York and then some time in London. Right, yeah. And this is the time, clearly, when you, uh, 82, is when you I had found to the flat the, yeah. in John Islip Street. Oh, yes. And the studio, when did you get the studio in Peacock Yard down in uh, 84. Lambeth? 84. And your painting has changed, hasn't it? I suppose, yes, my paintings changed from the um, straightforward uh, port paintings and um, I'm inventing and uh, trying to invent ways of using the traditional uh, uh, um, uh, way of applying paint, right? L laying it bare the, the structures that I'm using, like root rectangles or whatever. Uh, using a piece of foam to make a diagonal, and then of course, um, uh, um, working from the floor onto the wall, the weight of the paint would actually make the diagonal wobble or yes. bow or and, uh, bow. I, I, loop. Uh, bow, uh, loop. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would try and accommodate all those things. It was for me the most exciting time to be able to uh, having uh, learned how to control the gel. It is true to say that the invitation to Skowhegan in '84 yes. came about because of because it was re re reviewed by Vivian Rayner. She gave this glowing review in the New York Times. About this this tape by talking about your trip back to um, British Guiana mm -hmm. in 19. 89. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not long after your mother had died. Yes, sir. And you went back, uh, you didn't go to the funeral, but you went back, I think, in the spring of 89. That's right. Yeah. To Guiana with your son Sasha. Yeah, the youngest. Uh, what were your, what are your memories and impressions of that, uh, that return journey? On arriving at uh, Timihiri, the airport, the long lines of queues of people returning was just amazing. And the ride from the airport to Georgetown to our hotel was, uh, again, uh, very surprising to me because of the um, reckless driving that it, it seemed everybody was involved in uh, between the airport and Georgetown. I can't say I was conscious of returning as somebody who'd made it elsewhere, right, and it needed to be treated with kid gloves or whatever, but um, it turned out that that was somewhere lurking in my uh, unconscious. Uh, when we finally got to Georgetown, um, as I said, uh, Sasha had taken over by this that time and I was a little bit more buoyed being there. But I was still very intimidated by um, um, uh, uh, what I found. and. Towards the second or third day, in thinking, you know, with the exhibition in this Benab uh, mounted, and I started to dwell on the insistence that I felt I was experiencing in England and now in Guyana that my work had this Caribbean aspect in terms of color and, you know, the, the materials I used. Uh, it seemed held some sort of tropical tinge to it, and I doubted very much whether uh, this was the case because I certainly, in doing my work, never considered myself as painting out of any Caribbean intention. Uh, you know, I thought I was painting within 
some sort of uh, very old tradition. And uh, even though my work had become abstract, the intention was to work through the Western tradition. The, the intention wasn't to paint the Caribbean. I then turned my attention to investigating whether my work had a Caribbean uh, aspect to it. On being confronted early one morning with this um, heat haze where everything was sort of white with very little color in it, right? Uh, um, the doubt was very strong. So instead of uh, uh, trying to work it out in my head, I said to uh, Sasha, I asked him to look out there uh, uh, um, over the seawall to see whether what he could see had any connection with my painting, right? I said, I can't look at that out there. Will you look for me was, you know, my plea. And he said, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, um, it's funny you should ask that, but it, it is. I mean, there's something about because I was already painting those um, Thames pictures, wasn't I? Wasn't yes. I? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. It was the same time as you were in the Cable Street in Studios. In Cable Street Studios, yeah. It was just exactly that time. And um, uh, uh, he confirmed uh, that um, the difference between my work and work uh, of other people that he'd seen was that, you know, there was something... Frank, were things mm. progressing in London during this period? Because I, I'm bearing in mind that your New York experience and that and the, really the privations of the, 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 that you were experiencing at the beginning of the 90s. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not to put too fine a point on it. No. I mean, you were going through a very bad Very period. bad time, trying to make a, keep uh, the and rent And you're continuing and... to make work. Oh, yes. Oh, all yes. All the time. Oh, yes. I worked really uh, um, seriously committed uh, um, uh, my regime was out of the bed, straight to the wall. Mm. We were in Berlin. I had this idea that I would like uh, um, for Dan to be there, but he he wasn't. <clears throat> the one and only time that uh, um, Dan made the effort to come along with us to a show of mine was when I did a show in Birmingham. Uh, and that, that was a marvelous thing for me, you know, like here, uh, Dan has always been uh, um, not terribly uh, interested in, in, you know, being around when um, my, my work was shown. I mean, he, you know, he, he, he actually would go, but, you know, he, he, uh, this was different. This was, he traveled down with Benjamin and uh, stayed in Benjamin's house, didn't he? He, he became a novel writer. And he read, wrote, what, two, three? Two. Two novels. And decided that there wasn't enough money in novel writing. He stopped doing that and became a movie scriptwriter. You know, his attitude was, and he said it to me, my dad's a painter, my mother's a novelist. I mean, what do I want to write novels for? I'll be in between, so I'll write for pictures. Right? <laughs> that was his rationale. When this man died... This is your my, oldest, my, my oldest, child. oldest son, Dan. Yeah, Dan. My oldest son, Dan. Benjamin rang and announced that he died. You know, he was dead. And what had happened, apparently? He went out to do the shopping late morning. 
he fell fell down in the street. Passes by, picked him up, and got the ambulance. And he went into the hospital. He was dead. Diamonds. I like stunning, I like shining, I like million dollar deals. Where's my pen? Bitch, I'm signing. I like those Balenciagas, the ones that look like socks. I like going to the Tula, I put rocks all in my watch. I like sexes from my exes when they want a second chance. I like proving niggas wrong. I do what they say. I trying to make the best paintings the world has ever seen. I would have loved to be with you this evening, but I am trying to save my energy to continue painting. Thank you everyone for your support. <laughs>